Kelly Morgan joins me now on Your Sports Swindon. Kelly, thanks for joining me. It's been a, a while since since we spoke. Um, some some big things were at, were ahead for you until you, you unfortunately suffered suffered the injury, and and you've now got a an update on that for us. So tell us tell us more. Yeah. So sadly, I obviously I got this injury back in February, and it was a six month wait until surgery. Um, I was due to have the operation on the eighth of August. Um, it's a something called fourth nerve palsy so it's damage to a cranial nerve which has paralyzed one of the muscles of my right eye so I have sort of permanent double visions I, ca- I cannot box with um with that sort of injury and um, so we got to the surgery time and my last orthoptic review there's some positive changes in my eye and um, but because of those changes they now won't operate because if I continue to naturally repair then I can be overcorrected if they then have any kind of surgical intervention so i'm basically back in limbo with the eye um same scenario i could wake up tomorrow and be able to see again it's a miracle or i could be sat here in a year's time in the same position so it's just back to be a waiting game i've I've got my next review in september very very frustrating i'm sure and you're now having to think more about your, your kind of career outside of boxing and for the foreseeable future i think it's safe to say you're you're kind of quitting boxing aren't you yeah i don't see i'm very much at ground zero and there's been over this last six seven months there's been uh been really quite beyond the normal challenges of of high level sport um so as a consequence the position i'm in now is um i've parted companies with with rich farnan as my trainer um i have um no my main sponsor just disappeared off off the face of the earth so M- mjb um have stopped their support um without any communications which is quite frustrating um with a positive note chop house in old town and verilogic recruitment my two local sponsors were loyal mm-hmm. all the way through and i actually wrote to them both and say thank you so much for being so loyal but it's not right to take your money anymore at this point with such an uncertain future but those two um companies were absolutely outstanding supporting me through all the all the turbulence um, and then obviously there's the physical health, you know, I'm not in good health, but with the injury um, and with the, the scenario I'm in, you know, trying to be the very best I can be with no foundation underneath me. So, um, yeah, the security and the stability really is my number one priority at the moment. So um, I'm searching for full time work. Um, you know, the, the part time work I was doing was funding, giving me enough cash to be able to get on the train and get down to London and do some work with Noel Callum and keep working and keep being positive um but now without anything to contribute to my bills i'm really stuck so i have to look for something more stable and secure for for me and my family um, and that's the right thing to do at this point and um you know i'm sad that again uh <laughs> you know i am <clears throat> sorry Uh, I'm sad again that I don't think uh, I don't think my I haven't reached my potential. Um, I've been cut short again. I'm sad because you know the support I've had from this town. It's been amazing. <laughs> we, I mean, you were right on the the cusp of a of a world title shot, and we were we were all so excited. You you've been in some tremendously exciting fights as well so we knew you know against Nikki Adler that that would have been a, a an incredibly exciting fight and then she kind of dodged a dodged a bullet I suppose there and and went on to to different things and then we've seen since that she's been beaten quite comprehensively yeah. so you must look at that and think oh, I would I know I would have beaten her and and it, and it must be frustrating but you you still won the WBC silver title in Swindon and you know that's that's a night that still sends shivers down my spine and and probably all your all your supporters you know spines and um what what a great what a great night that was yeah no it was superb and um you know it was brilliant and it was lovely and so so pleased that fight was in in this town you know it's my hometown now that's something the boxing and sport has given me it's given me a hometown and um i'm really grateful for that and for every single person in it that's 
been on this journey to this point and has been 100% behind me so so lucky so lucky no matter whatever else happens all of all of the other rubbish you know to have those people like real friends real real family real people who have been really behind me has been something that I, I'm so lucky to have experienced that yeah and to have that fight in Swindon and to be able to thank goodness to win it you know was um was 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 wonderful and I'll obviously always look back on some fantastic memories um you know and the first couple of years in the sport you know with the with the help and support of Rich um you know we did some good stuff we both worked very hard together um and it's just a shame this injury has come along and, and everything has, has really changed um and I, and I have to just kind of look after myself at this point. Sure, you, you mentioned Rich then, and Rich tipped you from, from day one. I remember in, at Grange Leisure Centre, she's going to be a world champion. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, a fully fit Kelly Morgan still gives him that same viewpoint. Um, I'm sure he would still back you all the way. You mentioned you, you, you split with him now. What, what's, what's his thoughts on, on what's gone on? Um, in all honesty, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wrote to... to I wrote, um, I feel quite a heartfelt letter and a very balanced letter and, and thanking him for his time and, and, and spoke about, you know, some of the things that we've experienced as a partnership over the last six, seven months um, and how I, you know, I needed to, to make a move um, to, you know, to be able to just needed to make a move. Um, that was on the 22nd of August and I haven't had a response. So... I, I don't know at this stage, but I'm sure, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's, he's well and he's, he, you know, he's a busy man and he's, he's got lots of things to look forward to. So best of luck to him. Yeah, he's, he's obviously got a lot, lot of boxers, um, you know, in his stable at the moment that he's training and he's York Hall and all sorts of other places all the time. Um, now, I suppose we are saying that for the foreseeable future, it is the end of, of boxing for you. But this, this injury that you've got should heal itself at some point we just don't know when let's for argument's sake say it say it heals itself in in say six months time and you know you're good to go you get the medical clearance do you think you'd have a another stab at it um i i don't know what the future holds i do know that my entire life has been built around high performance sport and as a consequence i live with extreme highs like oh my days extreme highs but also extreme lows and it is literally like this all the time um, and so now I I have to I have to build some middle ground you know um, I'm I've got an assessment process for a job with an educational charity next week and um, working in schools with with young people from sort of six to 14 years of age and I'm hoping that's if I'm successful with that job then that will give me the opportunity to rebuild my spirit a little bit you know have a basic wage but be able to still survive be able to survive and also I still have that contact with that next generation you know and and tell them about the beauties of sport and fizz and health and and um i hope that i can make a little bit of a difference in that scenario but also while building some stability and structure around myself you know if i'm successful and if i can do that at least i'll be functioning as a good good person again i'll be able to stand tall um and and really i think boxing's in fate's hands you know i'm I know I've not I've not reached my potential. I'm so new, still so new to the sport, you know. Um, but at the moment, in order to be able to move forward in life, I have to I have to make some changes and 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 just start rebuilding myself. You mentioned the, the incredible highs and and the the incredible lows. Just what have you made of of the boxing scene? And yeah, okay, only only five fights and what course of what two or three years um but what have you made of, of boxing as a as a career well <laughs> i'm not sure there's enough tape rolling for that <laughs> but oh, what i will say is i will always revert to the positive and i'll i will speak always with a almighty amount of passion about the sport about what goes on inside those ropes 
that is beyond special. It's the most special sport in the world, you know? And for those girls and guys, but you know, for the girls that I've worked so closely with as well, I wish them every ounce of success that they keep going and they keep flying that flag with, you know, the passion, the heart and the, I don't know what the word is, but that kind of, they, they promote humankind through that sport. You know, it shows everything, boxing, shows absolutely everything. Um, and there's some people out there, the likes of Hannah Rankin, Michaela Lauren, Stacey Copeland, these girls that I've been so fortunate to get to know during my short time in sport. Um, I just I just wish them all the best and, and keep flying the flag and keep showing the world what boxing's really about. What goes on outside the ropes, that's an unfortunate byproduct in some instances. And, you know, it's, it's not all bad, but it's hard. <laughs> it's hard in many ways, many, many ways. But what goes on inside those ropes, just keep believing in that and keep doing your thing. You, you were obviously, you wanted to be, a, and you were, a, you know, a, a spearhead for, for women's sport and particularly women's boxing. We, we've had the likes of, of Katie Taylor now burst onto the scene. What what sort of shape do you think you know women's boxing? I hate talking about it as women's boxing because it's still boxing, but you know w women in the sport are now they're coming through. Do you, do you think it's in in great hands now, or do you think they're still facing you know a bit of a struggle to to make it through onto these big cards? Um, I I think and I hope it's exciting. It's in exciting times. Um, certainly now that the the quality amateurs that that have existed are now turning over professional that now increases the longevity of the sport and you know the the guys have been doing that since the 1900s you know they but we're new to it so obviously we've got a lot of years to keep building but i think that important step where they're now turning over um and as long as and i hope to goodness that they continue to get the support of those big juggernaut promoters um then, then the sport's in safe hands. From a skill perspective, the, the sport's in fantastic hands, you know? Um, just just hopefully some of those challenges outside the ring don't don't stop the progress because um, because there's so much good stuff to be seen. Just to finish up, let's let's have one, one final look back at your career. Is obviously winning the WBC Silver has to be the, the highlight, but if you could look back at, at one fight in particular, which was your favourite and, and why? Oh, my favourite fight was definitely the Zabados fight at that Christmas, you know. I I think it was my, my third fight. It was my third fight. Yeah, it was my third. And, um, you know, she was ranked number two in the world at the time. I, I was not short of being petrified, you know. I was like, oh, my God. You know, but when I got inside the ring and just, I don't know, I just felt, I felt out of everything I kind of performed uh, you know, I really made a, a step forward in that fight and I felt I performed more to what I was expecting than any other fight that I've been in. I really feel like I kind of nailed that fight um, and, I, and I, I really enjoyed it. And for the first time, I think because of that, that settled feeling of calm that I could then work from, I could actually hear everything going on because previously, I literally, the bell went, I couldn't hear anything until quite a long time after the fight had finished you know I start hearing the crowd again and everybody would come in but for that fight I could enjoy it because I was in control I could my senses opened up I went from fight or flight to I'm performing now and that's that's yeah that gives me goosebumps just thinking about it and it was it was some fight as well wasn't it oh yeah it was great it was <laughs> I mean I I mean, it wasn't necessarily packed with drama. I felt I felt in control, you know. Um, but for me, as as an athlete, I really felt things clicked into place, and and that's when I I started to kind of believe that actually I do really do have quite a future. I could do well here, and that and it was really that fight I think that things sort of started to turn around a little bit. Well, you know, Kelly, thanks for joining us. You know, we're sorry it's in you know such circumstances that we're talking about you you know not boxing anymore but you never know the injury might heal we might we might see you back in six to, to 12 months and and you may well realize your dream if you don't you know i can safely say that i'm very proud of what you achieved and enjoyed following it and i've seen all the highs and lows you know right in the change rooms and everything so i know what you've gone through um, and and you've done tremendously well. And it, like I said, just missing that that world title, which I'm confident you would have, you would have won. But we wish you well. 
stay healthy and, and look after yourself. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Betsy. Cheers. Yes.